hotel. Yeah. You probably could. Incognito. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. But they didn't dress up. No. They just went in normally. Yeah. Like, you know. They're like, ordinary persons. Yeah. Ordinary persons. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Merle Haggard sitting there with a cap like mine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and they're there. Like, you know. And same with, like, it was just incredible. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. And Haggard said to me, he says, don't say a word. And I says, I'm not. I'm not going to say a word. No. And I didn't say a word. I got up and said, I'm going to say a when I got back to the table, there was a jug of beer. Yeah. And I said, where'd that come from? And he said, well, the two gentlemen that were sitting there, they were gone. Yeah. But they said, the two, two elderly gentlemen that were sitting there said, I said to send you a jug of beer for playing a song. Yeah. Well, they didn't, so the guy didn't even know, oh, the two older guys, uh, so they yeah. didn't even, he didn't even know who they the were. The owner didn't <laughs> even know it was Haggard and Willie. Yeah. Wow. Like, you know, but I kept looking because it, just the way they are, yeah, the yeah. two of them. Yeah, yeah. You get you get Willie away and Haggard away from their, their from their their life. Mm -hmm. They're just like me and you. Well, sure. Incredible. Yeah. It's it, but it was the only way that they could like in uh, Waylon Jennings. He made a song about about Willie and, and Hag, but he said in an interview he would give his right arm. To be able to walk in back into a honky tonk. Yeah. And just walk. And just in. sit down and have a beer. Yeah. And listen to the band. He said, that's what I would really love. Yeah. That's you know, hardly any life. Because you can't. Because when you get into that prestige and that, that category, yeah. your life is not yours anymore. No. They own it. They own, they own all it. of Nashville owns it. The, the, the corporates, they all own it. Oh, it's absolutely. And, that, and that, that's where and that's where it started and early rock and everything but the country especially that's where it started getting industrialized radio got bigger fucking you know so all these corporations yeah, yeah you might write the music but we're gonna own your fucking song and oh, your yeah, fucking exactly. name we're yeah. we're gonna tell your last name is what go, just change the letters go or, yeah. oh yeah and you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that going and if to not well go that. kick go touch grass and play behind the BFI bin at the fucking liquor store again <laughs> fuck <laughs> or well they, yeah. Right? So. Because they gave anything to get back to, to the life they had. Yeah. Like, you know, because it was. Yeah. They didn't know it would take them that far, but it did. It did, yeah. you know. Well, did it ever? So. No, there's. I'm just looking on here. Yeah, there. Did some come. remember when Charlie Pride got discovered. He oh, got yeah. discovered in Billings, Montana. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 This is back. Yeah, and he was in the whole same hotel where I had drank. I didn't yep. play that. There's a there. there's a fucking yep. not to cut you off, but there's an article in the fucking newspaper a few years after the fact when he was there, yep. stating and it, yep. and when I I was down there I don't know twenty years ago whatever the fuck it was well, a few the way, times. The way Billings. it happened was and I'll tell and, you the story was Chet Atkins' manager was in Billings, Montana, and his car broke down. So he had to get the car fixed. And while he was getting the car fixed, he walked into the hotel. And he was singing. And Charlie Pride was singing. Yeah. And that's when he phoned back to Nashville. Yeah. And he was talking to Chet Atkins. Yeah. And he said to Chet about Charlie Pride. Right? And he says, sign him if you can. Or bring him to Nashville. Mm -hmm. So he went back. Holy to shit, dude. And he had a talk with Charlie, and he says, I'm inviting you to come down to Nashville. And that's when Charlie went to Nashville. And became About three weeks later, Charlie ended up in Nashville. Yeah. And then Holy fuck. was taken off. But yeah. like that's how it happened. That's so, crazy, eh? Like, yeah, it is. And uh, I was talking to... Uh, like how, Dave, you know, I was talking to Dave Dudley, and Dave told me that if you ever decide to get into this permanently and become like, you know, because he was going to come, he was going to back me up. And I said, well, let me talk to my, my partner, right? Yeah. Now I talked to my partner, Doc. That was the one that taught me everything. Doc played Bob Bill and everything else. Is that back right? In the day. Okay. Doc was in his 70s and he knew all the he played in Nashville. He knew who was who. Yeah. And he, I said, well, what should I do, Doc? 
And he says, well, here's the truth of it. He says, you're going to play for these guys, and they're going to suck the life out of you, and they're going to make all the money, and you're not going to make a fucking cent. Jesus oh, Christ. you'll get paid. But they'll supply the bus, they'll supply the everything. limelight, yeah. and everything. It'll all be done. All you have to do is just walk on stage, pick up the guitar, and play. But they'll make the money, but they're going to suck you dry. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. No. Uh, and then when you, when, when you try to get out of it, or get done with it, yeah. you have to pay the price. What does that sound that like here in a way? Yeah. And he said, now it's your choice. Yeah. He says, I've been down that road. Fuck he me. said, Harry, and I'm telling you, be prepared if you decide to take the offer. And the next day, uh, there was me, Dave, and Doc. We were in the restaurant. And Dave said, well, are you going to come with me? Or are you going to, like, you know? And everything like on the road. And I said, no, I'm refusing right now. Yeah. Now, that might have been the biggest mistake in my life that I made. Yeah, but, but maybe not. Hey, everything happens for a reason, man. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, you know, you know. stuff like that. Because, like... Doc was a lead guitar player. He, he wasn't a singer. Yeah. This guy was from, this guy could play violin, piano, everything. That's why they called him Doc, because he carried a little yeah. black bag, because oh. yeah. he tuned pianos. Oh, okay. That's how he got his name. Oh, Christ, and those old, yeah. those old piano tuners, yeah. fucking carry them goddamn forks, all that well, fucking <laughs> tuning. But tuning. anyway, Jesus this is, Murphy. like he told me, like this, this was back in the dirty 30s, when he was playing speakeasies, and he even did, uh, what show was it? Uh, it was vaudeville. Oh, yeah. And he'd come out on stage, and his partner would be playing the, the banjo, mm -hmm. and Doc would be on his head. 